No matter who you are, whether it's songs you're writing, it's the music you're making, it's the way you look. If it's not authentic, if people don't believe it, you're cooked. They'll take a really good looking kid and uh, and put him in a pair of tight jeans and you know, give him voice lessons and this lesson and that lesson and the other lesson and put him on stage. And they've made a, a persona for this guy that maybe does not belong to him. Some bands go out there and really push an image, you know? They push it, they push what they want to be labeled as or portrayed. They dress a certain way or they act a certain way. I think it's just best to be yourself, whatever that is. My, my old friend, Johnny Cash, 1956. He was coming out with I Walk the Line, I think. That song, and it was a big hit, and he says, brother, I think I'm gonna need suits for the road. I have about uh, 50 shows to do. And I made them up, sent them to him, and he gets on the phone and says, brother, what happened? I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I got the suits. How come they are all black? I said, because that's the way I picture you. You're kind of a sinister person. You have that persona, that aura about you. And sure enough, about, oh, I would say about four or five months later, he says, I want more clothes. Just go ahead and make me whatever, whatever you want. He says, by the way, we're not discussing the color anymore from now on. And that's how Johnny be became the, the man in black. Well, you wonder why I always dress in black. Why you never see bright colors on my back. Style is a product of your limitations. Otherwise, we just had Muzak, and everybody would be able to sing everything, the same style, the same way, and it, it would be nothing. You know, it would just be a wall of sound that had no emotion. I basically had a folk sounding voice, um, but through singing country music, I came up with my own unique sound. So the blend of the two, um, but then I just was determined, I just wanted to sing the songs that I wanted to sing. Um, I've always loved the song. Trouble. struggle just to get by many times the burden's been heavy still we carry it on side by side and I love that that um, line in LA I saw a bumper sticker that says welcome to LA pick a decade and fit in <laughs> Nashville's pick a genre fit in so that's what it's about. Play what's in your heart, and it'll take you to the right place. Have you noticed how much more the scene is changing, or how much bigger it is? I mean, I remember like when I went off, went off to, to college, and people were still kind of like, "Oh well, Nashville, where's your your uh, like <laughs> like your hay thing in your mouth and your you know your banjo?" I mean, <laughs> so much. No, it's a hay. Did they? <laughs> they did. <laughs> whoa, whoa. You know, I feel like the impressions definitely changed a lot. Um, now it's kind of funny right now. It seems like the place yeah. to go. I mean, if you're a musician, a uh, songwriter. And I'm running on fumes, trying to make it through, trying to get back to you. I know I gotta make it soon. Yes, I do. Running on fumes. Nashville's always been. Uh, even more so than I think people would ever give it credit for. I think there was the perception that it was only Nashville, was only country music, it's a closed door. And man, that couldn't be further from the truth. You know, there was a great R&B scene here in the 50s. Uh, Jimi Hendrix spent time here in the 50s playing the clubs. I kept gravitating toward Nashville and I ran into this little kid, little bald-headed kid playing in the service club. So I went to introduce myself and it was a guy named Jimi Hendrix. I said, uh, let's do a little jamming. I think he was probably the best showman on a guitar ever of any of us, he of anybody, showman-wise. You know? I think he was a sponge. He had a little Barry, Chuck Berry, a little guitar, yeah. Watson, and uh, you were an influence, and you were an influence on him, too.
you know, Bob Dylan coming to town to record with Johnny Cash. That, to me, was the, kind of the beginning of a, of a new age. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. And then the Johnny Cash television show in the early 1970s. The beauties of that show to me was his open-mindedness. And he opened his arms to young songwriters who have since gone on to become, you know, James Taylor and Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and on and on and on and on. I don't believe you, you're not the truth. Someone could look as good as you. Mercy, that's my life. I'm a country music artist in Nashville. But Nashville's way, 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 way bigger than country music. I can go to like a house show and see some punk band from Philadelphia play. And then I can go over to Cowboy Jack's and watch him record Johnny Rodriguez. You know what I mean? And that's all like in one day. It's, it's insane. It's literally, you know, runs the gamut from the most uh, devout gospel singer to uh, sometimes the most, the most hedonistic uh, rock and roller. If Hank Williams came back to town, he'd look around going, what's going on? <laughs> I just think that there's that many different types of creative personalities that are coming to this town. So that obviously affects what kind of music the town makes. I feel like I'm not as cool as a lot of the kids walking around here. It's like, wow. The hipsters have officially invaded uh, Nashville, yeah. for sure. You know, it's interesting since I moved here, you know, Jack White is, you know, is making records here. I mean, records. I mean, Music City is now truly Music City. Thanks. We're Jeff the Brotherhood from Nashville.